March is Autism Awareness Month, and you can help make a difference. Jacqueline William Hines is an author and autism awareness advocate, and she's here to tell us a little bit more. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. you for having me again. Let's talk about autism first. What are some of the mm -hmm. early signs in case parents are kind of monitoring their children? What are right. some of those signs? Some of the early signs that parents may notice, uh, your child may not meet your eye contact. Uh, they may not respond to their name. They may not, you know, have spontaneous speech. You may hear a lot of echoing. Um, say, for instance, if you say hello, they may, hello, Joe, they may say hello, Joe, as opposed to hello, mom. Um, you may not find a lot of very um, spontaneous play. What you may find is them doing a lot of the same things, very repetitive play, very narrow fields of interest. So they may be seem very preoccupied with certain things. Once you have your suspicions and you go to the doctor and those suspicions are confirmed, what's the next step? Because I'm sure that must be a paralyzing moment for a lot of parents. Right. Well, the doctors, uh, pediatricians now have assessment tools that they can use. They will ask the, the parents questions. They will go through the history. And then they can uh, formulate a diagnosis for you. Uh, for me, I was then referred to a pediatric neurologist. And uh, for a lot of children, you may go on to speech therapy, occupational therapy, really what the child needs. So uh, it's very crucial to get an early diagnosis. And it's really important that we get the word out and we raise money and awareness. Autism Awareness Month is all month long, starting right. today. Autism Awareness Day is tomorrow, April 2nd. What can everyone out there do to show their solidarity or maybe help to raise uh, money and awareness? Right. Well, Autism Speaks uh, founded, uh, well, they didn't found Autism Awareness Day, but they found the Light It Up Blue campaign. Mm -hmm. And what people do is, uh, you know, structures around the, around the globe are lighting up their structures in blue. Uh, people are wearing blue to in support of, you know, families on the spectrum. Um, so it, it's very important that the community understands that we do as families need the support and just need to know that people are there to help us. Now, if people are in search of a little bit of that assistance, what are some good reference points that they can go to, books, uh, everything like that? And you, you even have some books out, too. Right. I have a children's book series uh, aptly entitled the No Small Victory series. And I'm actually currently working on my fourth book called Entitled Joshua, I'm Over Here, which I'm very excited about. It kind of speaks uh, to the difficulty that children with autism may have with meeting or sustaining eye contact. But it's from the perspective of my other son, uh, when he was 10, so it kind of gives uh, voice to children, uh, siblings. Um, I think that a very good resource for parents if you really need information is check the CDC website. They have information on signs and symptoms. Uh, they can give you links to other services in your community, as well as the Autism Speaks website. And lastly, you have a few events that are coming up. Let's talk about the Casual yes. Fashion Affair. It's a great way that people yes. can raise money for a tremendous cause. Yeah, I'm going to be really busy next week. Um, actually, starting tomorrow, we will be having an information system at tow uh, information session at uh, Tower Square in collaboration with Cambridge College. Uh, on the third, we're going to be at Rebecca doing an information system called What You Said, What I Heard uh, for uh, regarding uh, early educate, um, excuse me, uh, special education advocacy. And on Saturday the 9th, I will be co-hosting an event uh, with Brighter Than Before Entertainment called The Casual Affair. And there will be fashions, there will be vendors. It's going to be a lot of fun. And this will be in support of uh, my nonprofit, No Small Victories, in helping to get the community information on autism and awareness. I want to thank you so much for the work thank that you, you do. Thank you for it, having me. More people like you are, are needed in this world, people thank that you. really try to make a difference. And now turning over to some medical news, numerous studies in the past several years have shown that there's no link between childhood vaccines and autism, but still thousands of parents continue to believe that there is a link and they refuse to have their children immunized. Here's NBC chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. She has more. Despite years of research proving vaccines do not cause autism, nearly one in 10 parents delays or even refuses to vaccinate their children. One of the questions I get asked is, is there any relationship between vaccines and autism? A new report in the Journal of Pediatrics says there's no cause for concern and that getting multiple vaccinations, even on the same day, is not associated with an increased risk of developing autism. 
there's no connection between uh, vaccination and the development of autism. Analyzing records from more than a thousand children and using data collected in the late 90s, researchers looked specifically at antigens, the protein in vaccines that help create immunity. They found no link between the amount of antigen exposure before the age of two and later developing autism. While the CDC now recommends more vaccinations than it did in the 90s, the level of antigens in today's vaccines is markedly lower than it was when this data was collected. A number of vaccines that are in the current uh, immunization schedule are, are what's needed to protect children. The government encourages parents to vaccinate their children on schedule. These are serious illnesses. We're talking about meningitis. We're talking about whooping cough. And it's important that we continue to protect and vaccinate our children. And this study that came out today is just one more piece of evidence to reassure parents that vaccines are safe. Not only safe, but effective and critical to protect babies and everyone else against life-threatening illnesses. Dr. Nancy Snyderman, NBC News, New York.